Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Christian Reynoso from the South Chicago branch. Um, thanks for having me. And today we're going to be making a craft. We're, we're going to be making a winter card, and it has a little bit of origami in it. And I hope you guys like it, and I hope you guys are able to give this to someone, a friend, a loved one, whatever. I'm sure it'll make their day. Um, so, all right, let's get started. Before we get started, let's go through the materials. So you're going to need some scissors. I recommend having a pencil. You don't necessarily need this, but it's good in case you need to make any markings or measurements or things like that. Besides, you can use it to write in, in the card. We're going to use a white colored pencil. Um, there is an alternative. There are some alternatives. You can use a white uh, crayon. You can use white paint. It doesn't matter. Use some glue or glue sticks. I have here a six by six inch piece of origami paper. You don't need to use origami paper. You can use computer paper or colored computer paper. Um, as long as you cut a uh, square piece of paper that's six by six. So that means six inches on the off side. That means this side is six inches, this side is six inches, this side is six inches, and this side is six inches. So you wanna make sure each side is six inches. If you notice, I use green. Green is my favorite color, so that's one of the reasons why I'm using it. But it so happens to be the color of most trees. So if you want that tree look, green's a good way to go. But if Dr. Seuss has taught us anything, is that you don't need to use green because greens can be whatever color you want them to be. Um, if you notice in this book, there are all sorts of colors. So if you have orange paper, uh, red paper, blue paper, uh, yellow paper, whatever, you can use that. Also, if you only have white computer paper, you can always color it. So if you have crayons or markers, I recommend coloring it first, then using it. So this is the most important piece of our, of our project. This is the actual cardstock, and that's what we're gonna be using to make the card. We need two pieces of paper. Once again, that's two. Two pieces of paper, two pieces of cardstock. So one I already have folded, just to give you an idea, because I know the camera um, is kind of close to the camera. So we're basically using it to make the actual card. And this is pretty much the material you see uh, that's used for cards when we make when we make cards. So we need two pieces of that. And this one's a bit of an option, but it is gonna be in the video, so I figured I'd show you what it is. So this is a piece of just blue paper. I kind of use this paper to wrap around the cardstock to give it that blue nighttime vibe that I like so much. Um, so you don't have to use this, or you can pick a different background. Um, it doesn't matter. You can use a different color. I know sometimes the sky's kind of yellowish or orangish or even red. Um, even sometimes has like a purple hue. So if you don't want to use that color, that's fine. If you just want to use the cardstock and color it in, you can do that too. That's fine. So I hope you guys are ready for some crafting. All right, so first things first, we're going to make our cards. So first, obviously, this is a little bit too big. Even my camera doesn't pick it up. So we gotta fold this in half. So we're gonna fold it in half horizontally. So this is a long way, and it's a little hard to see on the camera, but basically it's not this way. It's the long way, kind of like if it were a book. And we're gonna fold it into a book, so you wanna make sure it's the long way. So if you notice, this is the long way. And we're just gonna fold this over. Make sure it's in half. And just fold it like that. Then you have a booklet. It's gonna be our main piece of the card. All right, so if you guys are doing the colored paper route like I did, all you need to do is grab a piece of colored paper. In this case, we're gonna take our blue piece of paper and then fold it in half. I already folded it in half for you guys, so it's a little easier to see on camera. So I'm just gonna open it. So this is how it looks. So you're basically taking, the, you see the long edge? So we're basically folding in 
from, um, from the shorter edges. And we're folding in half. And we're making that booklet look like we did with the white paper. So the reason why we do this is because we want to make sure it's folded in half so it's a little easier to put over. And then when you put it over, all you have to do is glue it. And we're going to grab our glue stick, make sure we have enough glue on it. And then you can do this however you want. Normally I find it easier just to glue whatever it is we're actually attaching to it. La -da -da -la -da -da -da. Just make sure you get a, a nice generous amount. Make sure we got a little more glue. Just kind of go through the whole thing. Because obviously you want to make sure this sticks to the entire um, piece of paper. And I'm just going to stick it in there. And you want to make sure it's right in the middle because... So it's nice and even. And you might still be able to see a little bit of white. And one of the reasons being is because sometimes things aren't cut perfectly. So sometimes the papers might be a little smaller. But in this case, especially on this side, you tend to see a little white because if you notice, the blue paper and the white paper are supposed to be the same size. So if you fold it, it's going to make it uh, pull back a little bit. So it's never going to reach the, it's not going to reach the edge. So once you're done, make sure it's nice and flat. And it's like try to flatten out with your arms and your hands rather to make sure everything is nice and smooth. And there you go. All right, so here is that other piece of paper of cardstock that I have. Now the reason why we're using this is we're using this for, um, we're using this for kind of added detail. So if you notice in my card, I have a bit of snow here. And that's what that basically is. I kind of use the piece of cardstock to make uh, that those details. So if you notice some, we're gonna have some in the foreground and we're gonna have some in the background. So we're gonna do like two pieces. So what you wanna do is kind of fold this piece of paper in half. You don't have to, you can freehand it, but I recommend doing it just because it's a little easier. So I've made it into another booklet like we've been doing. So this is that booklet. And the reason why I did the booklet, because if you lay it flat, it's basically gonna be as wide as the piece of paper. So it's a lot easier if you fold in half because it gives you an idea of where you should cut and where you shouldn't cut. So you need two pieces we're gonna make. So if you wanna make it easier, I'm gonna cut down along the line here. And the reason why I'm doing that is so I can just get rid of any excess amount of paper. Kind of just need the, kind of just need the half. So if you notice, this is wide enough for the card. It actually covers the card. So this is what we're looking for. So now all you have to do is worry, worrying about the accents. Put the card to the side. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. Essentially, I just did like little zigzags and curves. So you wanna do one that's not as big as the other. So I'm gonna start with a small one. And like I said, I kinda eyeballed this so that I, it's hard for me to give you like better instructions because I just kinda did a freehand. So you wanna make sure there's one that is a little smaller from the one in the back. So we'll start with the one in the front. So I'm just making like a little, little curves here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it can be a straight line. However you want to do it, doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be perfect. So this is the one I'm going to put in the front. See that? Now if you want to know a trick, you can just flip, the, flip this over and start cutting here. And you can use this as the big part of your background. It's already got the curves here. So all you would have to do is basically cut 
a straight line through it. So make it make things a little easier for us. I'm gonna make it about this big. So I have to make you have to make sure it's bigger than the one in front. Definitely bigger if I cut from here. So all you have to do is cut straight across. So it's a little easier to just use what you've already cut and kind of use that as a background. So if you notice, let me take our boot. We're gonna use what we already did. Can I use that as an example? This is how it's gonna look. So this is the snow in the back. This is gonna be the snow in the front. I know it's hard to see with the camera because they're both white. Once we throw that tree in, you'll see how it works. All right, so it's time for the actual origami portion of this craft. So we need our square piece of paper. We're gonna fold it in half from the corner. So we're making it kind of like a weird triangular taco. So we gotta make sure it's not a rectangle. So we gotta make sure we're cutting it, we're folding it in half a um, in a triangular fashion. So you wanna make sure the tips are as even as possible. Make sure you fold it. Try to fold it as evenly as possible. Make sure I get all my edges. Then we have our triangular taco there. All right. All right, so now we have our tacos. So now we're gonna make an airplane type fold. You guys might know this one by now, it's pretty classic. So we're gonna open up our um, a green piece of paper and making sure the crease is sticking out at the bottom. So you wanna make sure we're looking at the fold. And if you, the easiest way to do that is just open it up. So now we're gonna take this side, we're gonna fold this side into the line. Not necessarily into it, kinda to the side of it. You don't wanna put it right in the middle because sometimes that throws off the fold. Kind of want to put it right next to it, but make sure it doesn't go past the line because then it'll make it harder to fold the other piece. You want to make sure it's a little bit before the fold, but close enough to it where it's almost down there. So this looks good to me. Hopefully this is smooth. Not that I'm not the best folder, but I try my best. So I know you guys will be more than equipped to do a good job. All right, so that's how it should look. That's one part of the little paper airplane. So we're gonna do that also. We're gonna do the other side now. I'm gonna grab this as best as I can so I can try to do it. So ideally you're kind of just lining this up because it should be in the middle. Notice there, I'm kind of lining it up just down the middle and then pressing into it. And then we worry about our fold. So I'm gonna put my fingers here so it doesn't move. It's gonna be as neat as possible. And you should have a paper airplane looking fold. All right, so now we're gonna flip this over. So you should be facing the side that doesn't look like that paper, the start of a paper airplane. You're looking for this side, the side that's kind of like flat. Um, all right, so we're kind of gonna do the same thing. We're basically taking this edge, this smaller edge, these smaller edges, and we're folding them to the, to the line, to the crease. So we gotta make sure it's lined up with the crease. Don't wanna go too far, you wanna make sure it's as even as possible. This is always one of the harder parts. It's not super hard, but it's the reason why it's made hard is because the fold is already there. So it makes it a little hard to go exactly where you want it to go. So it looks about center to me. So then we're just gonna fold it. And we're gonna do that twice. So we brought it from here, we brought this edge here we brought it in. And now the edge is latched up to that line. So now we're gonna do the same here. 
So now we're going to do the other side. Again, we're looking for that edge. It's kind of mad. The edge has to touch the crease. Or you can even match it up to the piece of paper. Whichever you think works better. To the fold, rather. It's all technically one piece of paper. making sure everything is flat. So now we got that side on the crease. Now we have this snazzy looking pocket thing. So again, you're just taking the edges and folding them in. You should have like this thing that kind of looks like a collar coming out like that. Kind of collar meets diamond. All right, so now we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna fold it in half. And by half, I mean where these two points are. So you basically wanna make a triangle. So we're gonna fold it in half from where the points are. And we gotta make sure that the two top tips are on top of each other and the edges are nice and even. So we're flipping it like this, making sure it's that we're roughly where the points are. Fold it in half, making sure it's a nice triangle. Trying to line it up as best as we can. And we're gonna just fold it in half. All right. So one side should basically look like a triangle and the other side should have that collar we made. So this looks more like a, a bit of a paper airplane with this little bit on the bottom. But one side should be the collar, plain looking thing, and the other side should be plain. Only thing seen is that crease from the fold we did earlier. So now we're gonna take this collared piece that we made and we're kind of gonna fold it down from the triangle tip. So we're gonna make sure we're going this way. So you wanna make the fold about to where this, you see this point here? It's got like a little collar flap too. You wanna make sure that collar flap kind of matches where your corners are for these little, the little collar piece. So you kind of wanna get it there. You don't necessarily have to have it there, but it will, it will change like how the final uh, fold looks and that would be fine so it doesn't have to be perfect the only thing is it's gonna make our tree stump look a little smaller so again it's kind of hard to see because you're kind of covering it you kind of want to go about there so it's not gonna be perfect because you can't see it but you do want to make sure that the lines match so this line has to match with the fold as best as possible so I'm kind of doing this without looking because you really can't see it kind of gauging kind of estimating That looks good. Now I'm just gonna fold it flat. So there you go. So we took it from here, folded it down, and we got it to about here. We got a fold. We got this to match up kind of where the tip should be. It's kind of a little higher, but again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So we're looking for that kind of fold. Fold's kind of hard to describe because it really doesn't have a name. So you're kind of aiming for this line to be on top of these points that are right here. And it does, like I said, it could be a little further down, a little higher, doesn't matter. So now, here's the final step of the tray. All right. So final step, we're gonna fold this, and we're gonna fold it kind of to match where the line here at the bottom is. See this line here? So we're kind of matching the tip to where that line would be. And again, if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. We're just kind of eyeballing it. We're kind of estimating because you can't obviously line it up perfectly because the line's behind this. All right, so then that should pretty much be our tree. Flip it over and this is our origami tree. And give it some final, some final little touch ups. And that's pretty much it. All right, so now we're gonna put everything together. So this is kind of what I'm going for. Be so before you even glue anything together, kind of eyeball it. You want to put your the, the card back here, the background snow, the tree, and then maybe the foreground snow. And you can decide how you want to do it, how it might look best to you, how it might work, however you want to do it. The, um, so whatever works for you. 
So now we're gonna move all this stuff. First thing we gotta glue is this guy. So we're gonna get our glue. I'm gonna grab this and glue the back. It's a little easier to glue what you're pasting onto it. Let's glue the table, not the card. Make sure there's not a lot of enough things on it. And we're gonna set that down. Make sure it's as close to the bottom as possible. So next we're going to glue our tree and the tree is a little tricky because you want to make sure you glue the parts that were kind of already folded. So you see how if you may have the tree it kind of pops up a little bit. So you want to make sure you put glue on those parts because otherwise it's going to stick out too much. So we're going to glue this down a bit. Uh, it doesn't pop up as much, but we got to get the other side. We're going to get this little flap here because we have to make sure this doesn't move either. Should be like that. So now it's not moving as much. You can get the little tip if you want. Now it's all stuck together. And now. Now the tip's good. We can take, we can paste the whole thing. I want to move the card too, just in case you go a little over. So now we're gonna get the whole card. Or not the card, pardon me, the tree. We're gonna get the tree. Make sure you get a good amount of glue on it. Try not to oversaturate it. You don't want to put too much on it. So now we're gonna put. It kind of low, and this is also dependent on your foreground. My foreground was kind of low. So I'm gonna kind of put it and kind of line it up. Mm, there's good. I like that. Maybe a little higher. Leave that tree trunk sticking out a little bit. So I'm good with this. So now we're gonna try to center it as best as you can. We're gonna be off to the side, however you wanna do it. And there's gonna be my tree. And there it comes. All right, so now we're gonna add the foreground. So I have my foreground here. I'll put a little glue on the back. Move this up a little bit. Try to get it as best as I can. Try not to get my fingers. Now we can put the card down. Bring it forward, or bring it towards us rather. And then just put this right on top. Try to line up the walls. There we go. We have a tree heightened in the snow. And let me put it towards the camera so you can see how it looks in depth. This is kind of how it looks. See, like almost looks like white mountains in the back or snowy hills. And then the front we got a little snow. It's not perfect either. It goes up and down. Um, so. I think that looks good. All right, so for this part, this is more of what you want to do. So there's detail. You can do a lot of things to it. If you want it to look similar to how I did it there, I just basically used my white color pencil and basically made um, snowflakes. You don't have to do this. It's not obligated. If you, want, if you think your card looks fine like this, by all means, and then you can do other stuff to it. I'm gonna put some snowflakes. Just randomly put them anywhere, wherever feels good. Just make it look a little snowy, a nice snowy day. Maybe one right to get it, right to hit that tree.
Just try to get it wherever you can, and wherever it looks good. Don't want to leave too much white or blue space in this case. I want to make sure I get snowflakes where I can. Maybe one there. It seems to be a little more snowflakes than I did with the card, but it'll make it look better, right? More of a snow flurry or something. Now we got a little more snow going. There you go. Making sure I'm getting this good amount of snow. Make it look a little more realistic, I suppose. All right. So now we're going to put a little snow on our tree. Again, you don't have to do this. This is more optional, but I kind of want to put a little snow on my tree, so why not? So the way I did the other triangle was I basically just matched a piece of white cardstock. You should have some left over from the from cutting the snow. So I have like a little chunk here that I cut out, and I'm basically gonna do this. So if you have an edge, and there's a lot of ways to do this. And I don't know how you have your your uh, your cut out your cardstock cut out. Might not be straight anymore, but I'm just going to take the edge there and try to match it as best as I can. And the reason why is because I'm going to pretty much use that edge to give me a triangle. If it would stop moving. All right. So I'm kind of going to kind of follow this. It's not going to be perfect because I'm kind of eyeballing it. And this should more or less give me the triangle I want. So I'm gonna cut that out. Probably helps if I'm holding these right, right? So basically, it's gonna match up if that works. And you can either cut this straight, you can cut it, um, you can basically cut straight a straight line through like this to kind of give it that triangle you were looking for. Or you can kind of round it out and give it more of a natural, the snow's kind of falling, not kind of on there, but not necessarily like sturdily on there. Let me get rid of that. Then we can kind of put that on the tip. All you would have to do is glue that on. And now it's got snow on it. All right, so once we're done with our cards, we gotta fill it in, right? So get ready to preview my sloppy writing. So all you have to do lastly is write a message. And I wrote, to the awesome people at South Chicago, you guys are awesome. Happy winter, Mr. Chris. So hope you guys enjoyed this craft and were able to do it. Please join us again for more crafts and more library fun. Again, this has been Mr. Chris joining you from South Chicago. Hope to see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.